given the graph of f of x, we're asked to graph g of x equals two times f of the quantity x plus three. The two indicates a vertical stretch by a factor of two, and the x plus three indicates a horizontal shift left three units. For a quick review, when we have g of x equals a times f of x, we have a vertical stretch or compression, given a is greater than one, if we have g of x equals a times f of x, the graph is vertically stretched by a factor of a. If we have g of x equals one divided by a times f of x, then the graph is vertically compressed by a factor of one divided by a. If we have g of x equals f of the quantity x plus c, the value of c indicates a shift left or right, where if c is less than zero or we have subtraction, the graph is shifted right c units if c is greater than zero or we have addition, the graph is shifted left c units. Notice how the shift left or right might be in the opposite direction we think because if we have subtraction, the graph is shifted right. If we have addition, the graph is shifted left. So going back to our example, again the two indicates a vertical stretch by a factor of two and the x plus three indicates a shift left three units. Let's record this information. To vertically stretch a graph by a factor of two, we multiply the y coordinates by two. To shift a graph left three units, we subtract three from the x coordinates. And because f of x is a segment, we can perform these transformations on the two endpoints to find the endpoints for the graph of g of x. Notice how the endpoints for f of x are negative two comma negative one and four comma two. So starting with the endpoint negative two comma negative one, let's perform the vertical stretch by a factor of two and a shift left three units. So for the corresponding endpoint on g of x, to shift the graph left three units, we subtract three from the x coordinate which gives us an x coordinate of negative two minus three. And then to vertically stretch the graph by a factor of two, we multiply the y coordinate by two, which gives us two times negative one for the y coordinate. And therefore the corresponding endpoint for g of x is negative five comma negative two. And I'll perform the same transformation on the endpoint four comma two. So to shift the graph left three units, we subtract three from the x coordinate, which gives us four minus three. To vertically stretch by a factor of two, we multiply the y coordinate by two, which gives us two times two. The corresponding endpoint on g of x is one comma four. Let's go ahead and plot these two endpoints and then sketch g of x. So we have negative five comma negative two And we have one comma four. And therefore this segment is the graph of g of x. Let's take a look at a second example. Again, we're given the graph of f of x and asked to graph g of x equals one third times f of the quantity x minus two. So here the one third indicates a vertical compression by a factor of one third and the x minus two indicates a shift right two units. Let's record this. Let's find the endpoints for f of x. We have negative five comma three, and we have three comma negative six. So starting with the endpoint negative five comma three, to vertically compress the graph by a factor of one third, we multiply the y coordinate by one third to shift the graph right two units, we add two to the x coordinate. Which means the corresponding endpoint on g of x would have an x coordinate of negative five plus two and a y coordinate of one third times three. Simplifying, we have negative three comma one. Now using the other endpoint of three comma negative six, we perform the same transformation. To shift the graph right two units, we add two to the x coordinate. 
for a vertical compression by a factor of one third, we multiply the y coordinate by one third. Simplifying, we have the ordered pair of five comma one third times negative six is negative two. Let's go ahead and plot the endpoints for g of x and then sketch g of x. So we have negative three comma one and we have five comma negative two. And therefore this is the graph of g of x. I hope you found this helpful.